The latest episode of Star Trek Prodigy has some big reveals for the series. As we walk towards the season finale for season 1, what does all of this mean for the story going forward? Thankfully, we've got 4 more episodes after this one, so we're in safe hands for now. This is our complete review of Star Trek Prodigy episode 15. As such, here's your spoiler warning. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack. Now before we warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button here to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. But as always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below because if you are talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. Okay, engage. With last week, our Protostar crew are heading into the Romulan neutral zone. Romulans are stopping the Dauntless, and we definitely had an interesting cliffhanger. This episode finally gets straight to the point. The surprise appearance of Admiral Edward Jellicoe was already announced ahead of time. Still, having Ronnie Cox surprise us war from Star Trek The Next Generation is fantastic. It's also good to see that Jellicoe has not changed one bit. Though I do feel like I'm watching Senator Kinsey more so than Jellicoe. Then again, I spent more time with that character in multiple episodes of Stargate SG-1. If any of you Stargate fans, by the way, I know this is Star Trek, but come on, that's also another great franchise. Imagine a crossover. No, we had the episode. Jellicoe has a point. The Romans are untrustworthy and usually up to something else in Star Trek. He is proven right in the very same episode. The Romans try to steal a protostar, but it also connects with Star Trek Picard. Or rather, the events that lead up to that series. Janeway's Log, which is a bonus story for the series of Prodigy, reveals that Admiral Jean-Luc Picard is currently overseeing the Romulan relocation mission due to the impending supernova. I think this is an excellent way to use a character like Jellicoe. In the Star Trek books, which continue the story before the new modern era of Star Trek, Jellicoe eventually became Commander-in-Chief of the Federation Starfleet. So it's interesting he might be in a similar role here. So this episode gives us a brand new cool planet, Noble Isle, which is some free haven for unregulated scientific experimentation, which of course includes genetic engineering. We meet Dr. Jargo, a rogue geneticist who knows where Dal is, or knows who he is essentially, and that he is basically a protege of Dr. Arik Soong, who genetically engineered him. Yes, that Arik Soong. For those who might actually need a refresher, Arik Soong was a Soong during the Enterprise era, of course played by Brent Spiner because no Soong isn't played by Brent Spiner. They experimented with genetic engineering, but was ultimately locked up by the United Earth after messing around with augmented humans and they decided to go to cybernetics instead of eugenics, which would lead to the soon fascination of artificial life and eventually lead to data and the soon type androids or law or the corporeal synths we see in Star Trek Picard season 1. I like this twist. It gives us an augmented character in Star Trek Prodigy, but doesn't just tie directly into soon being indirectly in a way that makes canical sense. It also makes Dal more unique as augments go, blending so many different species instead of just augmented humans. Now with some species we can't make out, including even weird ones like Folian and Species 8472 showing up there. That's somewhat wild. So, one big bombshell at the end of the mid-season finale for Prodigy's first season was that the Diviner and Dreadnought were sent from the post-apocalypse Solum, their homeworld, which had been destroyed by a civil war after first contact with the Federation. They went to the past to destroy the Federation. The Divine and Dreadnought did this by finding a protostar, infecting it with the living construct, and then planned to destroy the Federation from within. But the Valkanot Order did not put all the eggs in one basket, and they sent other members back in time to stop the Federation and save their planet from itself. And now we know who is secretly a Valkanot agent, Ensign Senior. Finally, and I mean finally, the revelation of Ensign Senior is proven true. We've known about this for some time, you know, there was something different about this character. If you've been watching Prodigy closely, you'll also be aware of this as they've been hinting towards it. Anyway, she storms into Diviner's quarters aboard the Dauntless and demands they change plan. The big revelation is that Senior is a member of a Vulcanut species. That is obviously the same species as Gwyn and the Diviner. Conveniently, she has been storing Dreadnought unit in a flat pack mode, where he is disguised as the table on board the ship. We've got to ask ourselves who inspects Starfleet cargo and how the hell can this get on board. Now I can see all the Valkanot being sent back in time to get their own Dreadnought unit, which is kind of interesting, it's like their own Pokemon in a sense, but oh well. Now we get a look at Romulan Spec Ops teams in this episode, and in a mark of some great continuity, they have similar outfits and identical weaponry to the Spec Ops team we see of the Tal Shiar in Star Trek Picard Season 1. This is really cool to see, and just adds some nice little connectivity between the shows, which we get in some ancillary media adjacent to Prodigy in the Star Trek logs on Instagram. 
these audio recordings of Admiral Janeway talking about the Romulan relocation mission of Jean-Luc Picard, like I mentioned earlier. We even get these Romulans doing a little Star Trek 2009 reference as they skydive off a long strut. I love it. I will say it's weird to see a Romulan kill team being taken out by a newly made Augment and Murph in his new form, but we kind of just have to go with it, this is a kid show after all. Though it's nice that now Murph has become the new security officer of the Protostar, that's going to be interesting. Speaking of Murph by the way, they put him in a hamster ball and it just reminds me of something from Ben 10 if any of you remember that series. I'm getting old. Overall this was an interesting episode of Prodigy, it did some things I really enjoyed and some things I did not enjoy so much. It was certainly a heavy episode, but the connectivity with Prodigy is continuing to do with other shows is amazing, and I have to give credit to the writers for that, by writing within these boundaries but using other boundaries to further inform their own story, it interconnects our Star Trek universe and amplifies even more. Just think, this is a kid show, but when these kids grow up and they get to say our age or your age watching this, they're going to be able to watch this show again and watch shows like The Next Generation and it all connects nicely for them. They're going to watch Next Gen, they're going to see Jellico for example or they'll watch Voyager and they'll see Species 8472 or Picard and the Romulan team and it all connects and makes a better story for them. So it works out and it's amazing. Now I am just going to have to get past Murph being this fully shape-shifting powerful entity at the moment. Him being indestructible is fine, but being able to defeat trained Telshire Optus with ease is a little too far in my book. He's not a changeling. The augmented stuff seems to have resolved in this episode alone. Dahl is a human augment, which is why the Federation wants him, which we learn in episode 11 at the relay station, due to augmented humans being illegal in Federation space, with augments locked away in a facility, with one notable exception being Dr. Julian Bashir. Ooh, a cameo, I wonder if that'll happen. Whether we will get some more story here relating to Dahl's upbringing and these protégés of Arak soon, unknown. Did they travel into the Deep Beta Quadrant or get away from Federation after defecting? How did Dahl end up with the Ferengi Nandi? Cast as a failed experiment. We're going to have to wait and see if there's a lot of questions here. Oh, and another plot thread, or at least a reveal that happened, was the Ensign Senior reveal like I mentioned. Now I'm glad this was done sooner rather than later, as now we've got some time to deal with this. Whether it's going to be instant cheese throwing around a ship next week, I don't know, but there's a lot heading towards Prodigy's two-part season finale, which means we've got four episodes left. Yeah, that's going to be quite busy. Overall, still looking forward to what the future has for the story of Prodigy and where we'll be taken with it. The next episode is here on next Thursday, which is December 1st, I believe, so uh, we better get in the Christmas theme or the holiday spirit. So what did you think of our latest episode of the Star Trek Prodigy? Personally, I'm still loving the Admiral Jamie content and seeing what the Dauntless is up to. Now with the revelation of Ensign Senior and Dreadnought being back, I cannot wait for the next episode. If you want to keep up to date on the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. But for now, I've been Captain Jack, thank you very much for watching, I look forward to bringing you more Prodigy videos this time next week, and we'll see you soon. Live long and my friends, goodbye.